Welcome back to the channel, guys. Behold, my latest acquisition. It is a 210,000 BTU Dayton oil-fired heater. Got this because it is really cold here in uh, the Midwest. Out there, it's sitting, I believe, 21 degrees Fahrenheit. My temperature gauge on the back wall says about 47 degrees. So it's cold, especially if you're gonna be sitting out here for a long time. So I got this because I wanted to make sure I can work in here comfortably, um, get that edge off. I'm not gonna run this for very long in here. It's only a two car garage, but uh, if I run this for maybe five minutes, it should get it up to a decent enough temperature that I can do all the projects that are off camera, you can't see them, uh, that are taking up space in my garage. So let's uh, figure out what's going on with this thing. Let's get this cover off and we'll begin diagnosing what's going on. So I pulled the cover off so we can expose not only the board itself, but so we can expose this fuel line. Uh, we also got the main cover off. So what we've got here starting from the right going left, that piece right here is your air pump. This is the main motor powers the fan. This brass piece here is the fuel jet or injector, ejector, multiple different names, but we'll just stick with, uh, with an ejector. The two lines coming off of it, if I'm not mistaken, this one right here is going to come down to the fuel. And then this line right here is going to your air. And that basically powers, uh, atomizes the fuel into the big chamber here, and that's what heats it up. Uh, right behind it, this piece right here is your igniter. So the gentleman I bought this from said that there was an issue with it not igniting. Uh, it actually turns on, but it won't ignite. So let's go ahead and hit the power button, which is right here, and see what it does. So the igniter is going. Fan is blowing. We have no light. So, oh, we actually have a code. It says it is an E1. Whoops, my light got a little too bright there. E1, and on the board, hopefully it'll focus, E1 is a photocell problem. So what happened is I think there's also a, a like a, a little sensor in there that it, once it ignites, it sees that flash and then it calls it good. Um, but what the issue is, failure to ignite, abnormal combustion, photo cell not working, fuel tank empty. So let's go ahead and try to diagnose those issues. As I can see real quick here, one of the main issues that I've been seeing a lot is those, are the hoses going bad. Uh, I don't see these hoses being the issue. So I'm actually gonna start back here and work our way forward because uh, if it's not atomizing, more likely than not what's happening is the pump may not be working. Uh, and then maybe after that, we'll check the, uh, the, the jet. But we saw there was spark, so at least we've got that. Well, there might be our first problem. There are four veins right here. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. What's supposed to happen is this thing spins, those veins are supposed to push out up against this edge here, and that's what pumps the, the air through and actually atomizes the, uh, the fluid, that, the kerosene, whatever fuel you use to, to, to burn this thing. So what's happening here is, as you can see, it, it's not going to pump at all. All this, this thing is doing is spinning and it's not doing absolutely anything. So let's go ahead and pop this out. I have to be careful. Hopefully I can do this without breaking it. Got to figure out how. I think it's just, should just pop right out of there. Yeah, there it goes. There we are. Oh, there went one. So technically, I, I mean, this thing, one just popped off, so we can probably just clean this up. Wow, let's get a little closer look at that. So that needs a fair bit of cleaning. That's probably another reason why this, uh, this failed. Uh, just 
lack of maintenance. Usually, I, I mean, if it were me, I'd probably pull this thing apart once a year just to clean all that black stuff out um, and make sure everything there's, is smooth in here. There's no grapes, no gouges, and also to make sure that this piece uh, is still working properly. Uh, clean it up. You can also replace them. I know there's there's parts. Uh, these are this is a part that can be replaced. So let's go ahead and just clean this up. Clean this guy up and uh, see if maybe this was the only reason why this unit was not working. So we finished cleaning up that air pump. We also blew out the lines to the ejector or the injector, whatever you want to call it. And we got some fuel. Um, it didn't, it, there, there is a little, or was a little bit of fuel in there. I've already drained it. So uh, that's what we're doing here. We're going th from here. Uh, I only have that two and a half gallon jug, so I'm not gonna fill this whole thing. So this should, uh, so this should do. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. Here we go, fire in the hole.
Well, fail. So I think I know what happened. Uh, I adjusted this back out because it looks like it was pushed all the way in. So it was, I believe, at the max pressure because uh, obviously the, the issue was in here and they were just trying to get the, uh, the pressure built up again. But I pulled this back out and I know this is only, this is probably uncalibrated, so I'll have to get a new gauge, but it was barely pulling anything. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start it up. I want to see where it runs and then see if I can adjust this up. Yeah, barely anything. Let's see if we can adjust it in. Yeah, there you go. See? Oh, oh, it's trying. I'm going to let it stop. So the reason why I wasn't firing initially was because this was adjusted too low. Uh, you can't see it, but I was looking over here and I could see it starting to, fl uh, to flare up. So let me reposition the camera so you can actually get uh, a view of the fireworks. Uh, and I will keep adjusting that while it starts up again. All right, shall we try again? All right, it is trying. And I think part of the issue has to do with the adjustment back here in the back. All right, so it's been a couple weeks. We have a box or a couple boxes full of parts. We are going to probably start with this one because I think that is the culprit, but I bought a lot of other parts simply because I didn't know what would eventually fix this. But my guess is this. So let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and start pulling some stuff off. We don't need this because I do have a replacement one. And here's our part. Oh, there goes a filter. You thought I was going to show you that whole process again, didn't you? Well, there's our old one. Now let's take a quick look at this one. Uh, hopefully the camera is picking it up, but you can see that it was cracked pretty bad here. And whoever owned this previously actually had uh, epoxied it back together. So that was probably one of the reasons why this thing was uh, what I'm thinking is the culprit. Also because of the spring. I've said it before is the spring in the ball back here is kind of like the regulator valve uh, for the pressure into the nozzle. So got this out of the way. I also replaced the filters. So let us uh, actually let me put that gauge on here. Now we can actually see some accurate PSI readings. So I'm going to run this. I'm actually going to run this without the hose attached. Uh, I want to set this gauge. Actually, I want to set the pressure to this. Uh, the instructions that I was able to find said that I should see 9 PSI on this gauge for this uh, 210,000 BTU unit. Uh, there are other PSI ranges depending on the, uh, uh, the BTU range or the nozzle that's installed in it. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to start it up right now and we will adjust this to 9. Assuming it'll turn on. Oh, it's so warm out here that I got to turn the thermostat all the way up. There it goes. Well, that's, an, that's something I didn't know of, so I'm gonna have to do this again. Let's do it with the hose attached, but I'm also going to uh, remove the hose to the fuel line so I'm not blasting kerosene in there. All right. I'm wondering if there's not enough back pressure. Let me pull that all the way out. I just want to make sure I didn't kill that spring because that's probably what happened is they pushed this forward and it pushed that spring right into the ball. And I may need to change out the veins too. Now that's pretty far in. There's the spring. Okay, spring still looks good. Just don't want to push it too far in and risk stripping out those threads. So that ball is what regulates it. So now that I was seeing that I wasn't getting enough pressure, I'm probably going to re remove this and put the new vein set in. All right, so there's our old one. It was actually the same situation as before when uh, I should have filmed it when I did. Uh, when I pulled this thing out, the uh, veins were all stuck inside. They weren't doing their job, which was uh, as it comes around in here, it's supposed to fall. And basically, it's, it's, that's the, the seal. So 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace it because I do have the part. Uh, it is right here. Brand new still. Well, this is not in the bag, but this is in, the veins are still in the bag, so we'll put that one in. Come on, get in there. Don't want to break it. There it is. Well, we got a little bit higher. Not sure what to make of that. I actually do. The air pump cover is the last piece to fix. Notice all the swirl marks and heavy scratching. This is causing air to bypass the veins, which leads to loss of pressure. To fix this, I used a piece of glass as the flat surface and started sanding with 500 grit sandpaper. After a lot of sanding, and I mean a lot of sanding, those swirls disappeared. I finished off with a thousand grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. No light seen here, so I think I did a decent job. This first test was with no adjustment from the last test before sanding, and the pressure jump showing now is a big improvement. Just need to dial it down to roughly 8.3 psi, and we're ready to pull it out to the driveway and fire it up one more time. So we finally got our setter up outside. Hopefully this is the last time I have to start this thing up. Um, that last little bit there where I was doing some hand sanding, I'm hoping that was the fix. So let's go ahead and pull that trigger. Oh, she's burning. I'm excited about this now. hot too. Awesome. Sweet. Alright, for some fun, let's get this thing out. Let's see what it looks like. She's getting hot. Awesome. Well, I am super happy that that actually fixed it up. It appears that if I had just done some sanding, maybe that would have fixed it without having to replace too many parts. But you know what? It actually works now. It's not burning like it did before, I'm getting the right pressures. And you know what, once it gets cold again, I can whip this thing out and it should warm up whatever room. Well, at least my garage, I was thinking my garage, but um, the issue I'm seeing here, some people are probably yelling at their screen is that 210,000 BTUs. 210,000 BTUs is probably a little bit too much for a two bay garage. Um, let me show you real quick what I actually found that might fix that issue. And uh, give me a second, it's up there. All right. Oh, come on, light. There we go. This is what I wanted to show you. This is a wick heater. Um, this, I believe, is a 35,000 BTU unit. Probably a little bit better of, uh, for my application, which is using it in a garage. Um, this one doesn't drink kerosene like that other one does. Uh, plus, this is smaller and more compact, and I can actually run this while I'm doing some other items. Uh, I believe I can probably do this with some woodworking stuff I'm wanting to do, but I need to do some research on that. 
Uh, I mean, I was using it in the meantime when that unit or that uh, torpedo heater wasn't working simply because I needed to get some stuff done. So I found this online for like 30 bucks. I will probably bring this out in the winter time. It does need a new wick in it. It was starting to uh, not fire up when I was using it. We'll probably see this later on, but figured I'd want to show, show you what I had uh, in the meantime, because the, unfortunately that torpedo heater uh, little project took a little longer than I wanted it to. So we'll get to use that soon. Well, I'm super excited now that I got that guy working just in time for it to go into storage until winter. At least one more thing out of my uh, list of like 30 other projects I've got done uh, finished. Now I can move on to the next ones. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this video on this torpedo heater. I have more coming, so stick around. Uh, be back soon.